What is up guys, Bellamy here and in today's episode on Prime Survival we are going to be doing a little bit of work on our village, yeah, something new. Uh, I know we've been focusing super heavy on our village but that is because I, my favorite thing to do when, you know, getting into a new seed or a new game on Survival Minecraft is to get a sprawling village going because it is very, very amazing and very good to get yourself set up with things like diamond armor and diamond tools very, very easily and on top of that things like enchantments and get yourself a ton of emeralds so we're going to be talking about expanding your village a little bit today and setting it up for the future and we're going to be talking about a little farm we set up here with you can see we got a ton of uh farmers moving around on top of that now it's very basic it's just a simple expansion on the kind of farms that uh the villagers actually you know spawn with themselves um it's very basic it's just two rows of mixed it's got a bunch of a bit of wheat and some beetroots and essentially they farm it themselves i you can see i put a bunch of composters here in the middle so um we have a lot of farmers interested in hanging around this area because they're that's the workstations that they're tied to so the reason i like to do this and group up a bunch of composters is because um, when breeding villages, there are two conditions that need to be met. The first is there needs to be spare beds, which we will show you guys in a moment, and there needs to be happy villages. Now, the villages become happy by trading and things like that, but the, the main thing they want is food. Now, they can provide themselves with food by cooking, uh, by um, harvesting things like beetroot and wheat and stuff like that, and that will make them happy, which will then cause them to breed if they do happen to, by chance, happen have extra beds nearby. However, we're going to uh, artificially increase the rate at which they're going to breed. Now, I'll show you guys over here my kind of scuffed setup that I've done. I've kind of dug a small hole over here, which I will uh, make look a bit better in the future. But it is just a hole over here with a ton of beds. It's essentially just a sleeping quarters. Um, it's not the prettiest thing in the world. Uh, you know, I, I can spruce this up in the future. But essentially, it was just an easy way for me to add a ton of beds to the village. So that I can uh, artificially increase the village population very quickly here. And what we're going to do here is once all of our villagers actually come back from the from the middle of the day hang out at the bell over there um we're going to give them a bunch of food so i've got uh about two and a half stacks of bread here and we're going to go ahead and give them to our villagers to encourage them to breed uh but i thought before we did that we're going to go ahead and show you guys the reasoning for our pumpkin farm our sugarcane farm and our wheat farm um, now, obviously, the wheat farm itself has multiple reasons why we made it. We can use the wheat to breed villages. We can make bread and different things like that. Um, the sugarcane farm we're actually going to use to create paper. So to create paper, you want to put um, sugarcane in any... As long as it's one by three like this, just a line of sugarcane, you can do it in any part of the crafting bench. It really doesn't matter. And you will get paper. And it's essentially a one-for-one -one trade. So, you know... 64 sugarcane essentially is going to equal 64 pieces of paper and we can trade these with either librarian villages or cartographer villages to get ourselves some emeralds they're what i like to trade with um you can see this village already has its own librarian these guys are already breeding on their own because of the food they've made for themselves uh my word they're actually breeding like crazy um but we'll force them to breed a bit more in a minute but we can see we got a cartographer here and i've already been trading with this guy he does a 24 paper for one emerald trade which is fine um we also have our librarian up here who actually has a protection for enchantment so i'm actually going to trade with him now he does the same trade 24 paper for one emerald i'm going to go ahead and trade with him and I'm going to hopefully do enough trades that I can um, level him up here. You can see the XP bar is is uh, is filling up here, and he is currently a novice. Um, and if we go ahead and add in here, we can level him up. The bar is full now. If we close the window, um, you'll see the little badge plate on the front of him will change. So he went from a novice to an apprentice, and you'll see he adds additional um, trades to his window now. So now we have the option to not only trade for our enchanted book for protection four we can also trade books for emeralds if we want to make that trade with him and we can also trade uh five emeralds and three books for infinity which is actually another good enchantment so we got pretty lucky here now i can go ahead and make some books if i wanted to with the back with the extra paper that i make and level him up that way so let's go ahead and do that um, now the sun's going down here which is fine so we're going to go ahead and let the uh, villagers go to sleep and reset their own days 
Uh, but before we go ahead and sleep ourselves, we're going to make ourselves some books because I have some paper here and I got some leather, I believe, in here somewhere. Yes, there we go. We got 26 leather. So we're going to go ahead and make some books. So to make a book, you simply need to take three pieces of paper in a row and then place a leather beneath it. I actually believe you can place the leather above it and it should work just the same. Yep, no problem. So you can pretty much do this kind of L shape with the three papers and the leather in any kind of setup and it should work, no issue. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and put our paper in here and make a bunch of books. Uh, so we've got 16, uh, that'll be for a couple trades. We'll make a few more here. Um, we'll make the max kind of amount that we can make here. Uh, my shift click is not working properly. I am working on getting a new keyboard currently because it's uh, slightly inconvenient to have to click everything around like a novice Minecraft player, but Nevertheless, we got 24 books, which hopefully by the time uh, the uh, librarian comes out in the morning, he will be willing to trade me those books for some of his precious diamonds and we can level him up once again. So I'm gonna go over this way and see if I can't find that librarian again. I believe his bed or his workbench was over here in the back corner of the village somewhere. So we should see him nearby. His lectern is here. So he shouldn't be too far away from this, I would imagine. So if we just look around, we might be able to find, here he is. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and trade some books here and we may hopefully get enough. So I'm gonna trade one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, is that gonna be enough to level him up? Uh, yes, it is. Okay, so we should see, yep, his, uh, his badge is turned to gold now, so that's great. And he's going to office, offer us another enchantment, which is Curse of Binding. It's not gonna be any useful, it's not gonna be useful to us, but, we can actually buy glass off him, which is actually quite nice. So if you are farming a ton of emeralds like I will be doing, this is actually a really great trade. Four blocks of glass for one emerald is a really great trade because you don't have to worry about digging up a whole load of sand and then smelting them to get the glass. I can actually just go ahead and buy a ton of glass and not only can I you know, get myself some glass, but that's gonna level him up once again. So we should see his plate turn emerald here and he is going to be an expert now and he's going to give us two additional trades which are going to be his book and quill um so we can trade two books of quill or one book and quill at the moment for a single emerald or we can uh, go ahead and buy a clock with a number of emeralds here so some pretty great trades and uh i'm pretty happy with that now do i have any leftover books i do not i used all of my books uh, i still have emeralds so i could go ahead and buy some more glass but you'll notice um, that I don't quite get as much XP from the glass trade as I did previously, but I have a lot of emeralds, so I can probably go ahead and buy as much glass as he will allow me to on this day. Um, so I'll go ahead and I can buy 16 more, so 48 glass in total, and you'll notice that there's an, a red X through our trade now, because he is technically, the way this is kind of trying to replicate is that there's no more glass left. He doesn't have any more to trade. He's not willing to trade me anymore. And unfortunately, we aren't able to level him up. However, if we go away and come back in 10 minutes or so, or in the new day, he will replenish his stock and I should be able to buy some more glass and level him up. So we'll come back and do that shortly. Uh, but what we're gonna do now is we're going to go over to our farmers over here that are all sitting over near this, uh, this wonderful farm that I built. And we're gonna go ahead and throw a bunch of bread at them to encourage them to pick them up. And then hopefully that should encourage them to breed. So if I just go here and just, I mean, I can choose to throw, you know, like three bread at him, um, three bread at him and three bread at, I mean, that could be a her. Uh, and that will probably work. However, there is a more fun way to do this. And that is just to just throw the bread like a crazy person all over the place and let them walk around and pick it up. So you'll see they'll kind of run like crazy for it. I like to call this the scurry roll because they're in a sweat panic to pick up all of the bread. Uh, it's a bit of a rude thing to say, but <laughs> uh, I think it's quite funny. So hopefully these guys will all pick up this bread and they'll say, hmm, okay, all right, I got a lot of food now. So maybe we should make some more villages. So if we're lucky, we'll see that now. If not, uh, we may have to go and throw down some more beds because it seems like in uh, while I've been busy doing other things, they've been busy breeding because we saw a few of them breeding over in the center there earlier. So maybe they've actually already filled up all the beds, which would not surprise me based on how many farmers there actually are here right now. But while we're waiting for that to potentially happen, 
uh, we can go ahead and look at some of the farmers and see what they're willing to trade. So I can go ahead and buy some more bread, uh, which I'm actually going to do from this guy because it will level him up to the next level, which will give him, you know, more trades that will be available to me. So once he levels up, I'll check and see. And now this is great. We have pumpkins and we can trade five pumpkins for an emerald. So I can go ahead, trade a bunch of pumpkins, get some more emeralds back, and he's going to level up once again. And then he'll have even more traits for us. So once you level up, boy, and there we go. So now we can buy cookies if we'd like. Or when we do create a melon farm, which is something I will do in the future, we can trade melons with him as well, which is great. And we can go ahead and do this with all of our farmers. So it's very easy in the future for us to just walk up and buy as many, um, sell as many of our products as we want to uh to gain emeralds from all our farmers that with our pumpkins and things like that and melons in the future and so on and so forth so you can see we're spending our emeralds to kind of level them up and get bread here and and then we're selling some pumpkins to make those emeralds back and this guy more or less got the exact same trades and you'll notice that while i'm holding out my emeralds here that if any of them are willing to sell anything they'll actually hold that item out so this guy over here where did he go see this guy he is willing to sell me bread so I can go ahead and buy some bread off of him, uh, and I somehow just got a bone meal. I think that just came out of one of the composters from one of the guys throwing that. Um, but I bought some bread, so I got another almost two and a half stacks of bread. So I can go ahead and throw this bread down to them as well. But what I might do is actually I'll do a little bit more trading, because I got a lot of pumpkins here. So I'm going to go ahead and just sell all of my pumpkins to these guys and get them nice and happy. So this guy, he's willing to sell me some more bread. I'm going to buy some bread to level him up. Um, I am, I understand that I'm going to have a lot of bread after this, uh, but that is absolutely okay. I am more than willing to spend my emeralds to level up my farmers. It is a great thing to do, um, and you shouldn't feel like you're wasting uh, your materials to do this, because if you have a setup like the one we've been doing in this series so far, it will be no issue for you to get yourself some emeralds back if you feel like you're being a bit frivolous spending them too much. So we got some more bread, uh, and you know I'm a big man. I have plenty of steak, so I have no actual need to eat bread currently. So I'm going to go ahead and just throw more bread out to these guys and watch them pick it all up. Um, this is quite beautiful. Here we go. Right, pick it up, guys. Come on, cheer up and give me some baby villagers. I want to see it. Come on. Now, if they're not willing to give it to me, um, what I can do is I can go ahead and make a couple extra beds in the uh, in that little uh, <laughs> bunk area in our village, and maybe that will increase the cap a little bit if they are already at full cap on the village, and they'll be more than willing to breed after the fact. So we're going to come over here because I have a bunch of wool stored in our chest out here, and we'll go ahead and build a couple extra beds. And now I know that little area isn't the most aesthetically pleasing. It's not the greatest looking little area, uh, but it gets the job done and practically it works quite nicely. Now I'm going to get an actual couple more pumpkins here because, you know, I, I can trade a bunch more. I may as well get some extra uh, paper here too, so I can trade to my... Um, trade to my librarian when he resets his, uh, his little selection of goods. And we're going to go back and we're going to make some beds. But first, we're going to trade a couple with a couple more villagers, get a couple more emeralds, hopefully. Um, actually, what I might do is I might have to put some of these pumpkins and stuff in the chest in here, just so I can clear up a bit of inventory space for all the beds. Um, now, I can see they're all going over to the town square right now. So if there is space, we should see them breeding. Um, they don't necessarily have to be at the town square, but I feel like it, is, it does make it slightly more likely for them to uh, want to breed when they are there. Now, I'll put all these pumpkins in here. Is that all the pumpkins? It seems to be. I'll put this bone meal away in here also. Now, I just got bread and wheat. That's great. All right, so we're going to go head over to the town square, see if any of these guys are interested in each other. I don't see any love hearts flying at the moment. It's a good thing that at the start of this, uh, this video, we saw them already breeding. Uh, but we want to try and force it. So let's go ahead and make a couple beds. Uh, I don't want to make too many here, but uh, I don't want to make too many, but let's let's go ahead and make five beds. Um, my shift key is not working. I cannot shift click these. I'm just going to have to do this one by one. That's very annoying. And now, of course, now it decides to work. All right, so let's go ahead and place these beds. I don't want to place this green bed, even though I technically stole it from the villagers. Uh, I, I kind of want to keep the green bed for myself. I think it's a bit nicer than a plain white bed. 
maybe it is a little bit cruel of me to give all of these guys just plain white beds. At least they look nice and clean, uh, despite being in a sand hole. But nevertheless, uh, like I said, it's serving its function. Uh, so we're going to place two more beds here, and then we'll go ahead and place two more up the back here. And yes, I know this is a little bit... <laughs> it's a little bit seedy, uh, but it's going to have to do for now because we want... Eh, there we go. Of course, as soon as the cap is released, these guys are more than willing to give us some baby villagers. So they're going crazy now. All right. Um, you can see we got one, two... Uh, we should see about five <laughs> pop out here. Is that three? Uh, is that three or is that the other... Is that the second one? All right, yeah, one, two, three... Uh, do we see any more? Uh, they're still trying to make more villages. Wait, get out of my way, Island Golem. I need to see all of our precious babies. All right, there is four. Where's the fifth? Can I see a five? Uh, one, two, three. Uh, I've lost count. There's too many running around. But these guys are more than likely going to give it to us if, uh, yeah, see. Um, the little uh, thunderclouds that happen when they're breeding and nothing wants to happen is usually because either one, they're unhappy or two, because there's no more space in, in terms of bedding. So if I was to put some more beds down, they'd probably be more than willing to make more babies. But this is uh, this is the hysterical part of doing a setup like this, is um, we should see all of the villagers pile into here right now and get ready to go to sleep. So uh, we should see more coming from in different areas of the town. Um, may is it possible that they can't actually reach the top be the top bed? No, we still got quite a few empty beds here, so we should see more villagers coming. We see all the new ones coming in to fill in their new beds, um, but it looks like we've got a couple farmers that are more than willing to work at night. This guy over here doesn't seem to want to go to sleep just yet. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and eat a bit of steak here real quick to fill up our food bar, and then we're going to place our bed and get a sleep in ourselves and hopefully when the night is reset we'll be able to go over and do a couple extra trades with our friendly little villagers so let's go and check our librarian first and foremost because he was the first one we traded with and hopefully he's reset by now and he has great all right so first things first i'm just going to buy some more glass because that's going to give me the most experience up the top here to help me level him up um, and now I got a full stack and a bit of glass and this guy is going to level up and you'll see his, uh, his badge turns to a diamond and that mean he is, means he is a master. He is max level and there is no higher, there's no more trades he's going to unlock and he is going to offer us a clock and a name tag, or sorry, a name tag to only for the final rank, which is really good. These are going to be useful for us later on. So for 19 emeralds, 20 usually, he is going to offer us a name tag, which is going to be very useful in the future. And at the moment, he's offering us protection for, sorry, protection for, and uh, we do have infinity as well. So that'll be really great when we come to make a bow. Um, now I do have, I no, I don't have my, uh, I don't actually have my, um, my sugar cane, so I don't have any more paper to trade him for some more emeralds. But what we do have is a bunch of pumpkins over here in the chest. So we'll go ahead and pick them up and see if any of these farmers, when they actually get over here to head to work, are willing to f trade us some more pumpkins. Uh, we also have a little bit of wheat, so I might trade that to some lower ranking uh, farmers if they are willing to trade me that as well. So I'll put these pumpkins in my inventory, and I'm also going to put some of this glass away. We'll put it in here as well. Um, and we'll take one. My shift key will work. One. Come on, let's go. One, two, three. One, two, three. And uh, we can't quite fit them all. Let's go ahead and put some wool in here and take one more stack of that. All right, so we can make... Uh, a few stacks of paper to trade with our villagers. We'll let our farmers all congregate first. And let's go over to our cartographers that we have over here. The ones that I've been trading with already. They should have some trades here for me for some paper, which would be nice. Yep, there we go. So you can see these guys are already ranked up. They're not quite master yet, but they're already offering me Ocean Explorer and Woodland Explorer maps, which is great. So I'm going to go ahead and trade this guy with a bunch of paper. Let's go, buddy. Let's go, buddy. All right, here we go. I'm gonna trade all this paper until he will no longer take it from us. Let's go. Come on. There we go. All right, so that's all of our paper. Exactly. Down to zero. All right, that worked out perfectly. So you can see we've been spending quite a few emeralds, and we've, we've still got 58 emeralds, so it's quite a few. Um, and I think we'll have quite a lot more after we finish trading with a few of these villagers. So we're going to trade all as many pumpkins as these guys will allow us to. 
Um, this guy, does he have pumpkin trade? He does not. Uh, he has melon trade. For later, that's good. Uh, what have you got? Potato. Okay, that's nothing too interesting for me yet. What about this guy? Now, see, this guy is going to offer me pumpkin pies, which is not the greatest, but I may as well buy a bunch of them to level him up. And, you know, after my stakes run out, I'm going to have more than enough pumpkin pies, basically forever. Uh... <laughs> And I may as well use them. So I level that guy up. That's great. Now this guy is level one and he is offering wheat. So I'm going to go ahead and trade the little bit of wheat that I had. Um, get that out of there. Until he levels up. That's great. I don't want to use all my wheat in case there's another level one guy. Wait for him to level up. Come on, I'll follow you so I don't lose you amongst all the, the ruckus. Um, now this guy's also trading pumpkins. So I'm going to trade with him until he levels up again. And you see it's a pretty simple process. We're just trying to... Um, level them up without just going crazy and blindly trading with them at the moment. We will eventually get to the point where we do that. Um, that's good. He's leveled up. Uh, that guy's already leveled up. So is this guy. Uh, wait, he's doing eight pumpkins for one. He's ve he's upset with me. Um, I, I, I don't want to trade with you if that's how you're going to be. What about this guy? Potatoes and beetroots. Uh, this guy, five pumpkins. That's pretty good. Um, we'll trade a bunch of them to that guy. He seems happy now. Uh, we can buy some bread off this guy. So, um, so he can level up, uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, I spent a lot of emeralds on that, but that's fine. And then he's going to give us pumpkins, great as well. We still have a stack and a bit of pumpkins, so we'll try and find, here, this guy's willing to trade us. Wonderful, alright. So that's almost all of our pumpkins, we only have 12 left, so let's see if there's someone, here, this guy, perfect. He has 12 trade, there we go, so we still got a stack and 23 emeralds. A bunch of bread, so I'm going to go ahead and put the bread in one of my chests just here, so when I come to uh, come to want to breed any villagers again, I have more than enough bread to throw at them. I have a ton of pumpkin pies, so I will not need food for quite some time, and in my chest over here, I can go ahead and throw all my additional emeralds in here. So we got quite a lot of emeralds, and we've been spending a lot as well, so had I just saved all the emeralds that I've uh, earned, I'd probably have an entire row of emeralds right now, but that's fine, because we're working on upgrading all of our villages so a pretty simple video guys we just wanted to kind of expand our village in a simple easy way to understand we threw a lot of beds down as long as they can path towards them they're willing to sleep on them it doesn't matter if it's in a hole of sand um, they're more than willing and they're happy to do so and we have a ton of farmers here who are just going to continue farming and they're going to be all here for when we want to trade pumpkins wheat um, whatever it is we may want to farm and trade with them so potentially melons in the future when we have access to fortune axes and, and things like that so very good and a future video will most likely start setting up our village so that we can get more librarians with enchantments that we want like the one we worked over there we'll most likely try and level up 10 15 maybe who knows 20 villages that have all of the enchantments in the game that we may need access to at any point um, which means that we can enchant all of our gear absolutely no problem without having to uh without having to legitimately find enchantments and uh do it the difficult way or enchant stuff on an enchanting table although we will cover that in a video uh i do believe doing it via the um <laughs> via villages is easily the most efficient way to do it and the and the most simple way so we'll do that in a upcoming video because we're going to gear ourselves out hopefully using this village with some diamond armor and weapons and some nice enchantments so we can go and fight the ender dragon among other things in this game so that's it for this video today guys i hope you learned a little bit about uh villager breeding uh the simple way the bellamy prime way and uh <laughs> i'll see you guys in the next episode of prime survival thanks guys